hello students welcome to engineers academy kindly subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed it yet now let's solve this particular problem in this problem it is said that determine the horizontal force p required to cause slippage to occur the friction coefficients for three pairs of mating surfaces are indicated the top block is free to move vertically so we have these three bodies let's say this is body 1 this is body 2 and let's say this is body 3 which are represented here right so the body 1 has a mass of 100 kg and this is 50 kg and this is 20 kg so let me write the weight of body 1 will be 100 times 9.81 so this will be equal to 981 newtons the weight of body 2 will be 50 times 9.81 and that is 50 times 9.81 so this is 490.5 and the weight of body 3 will be 20 times 9.81 so this is 196.2 Newtons. So now if we consider that body 1, right, so if the P force, the external force on body 2 is acting in this direction, so what will happen is that this body will tend to move in this direction. So if it is tending to move towards the right, so there will be a friction force on this body 2 in the opposite direction, right, and the friction will be acting in this direction, right. And let's say this is F2, right? And the same friction force will be exerted on body 1 but in the opposite direction, right? So we will have that same friction force here as well, right? And the weight of this body will be acting vertically downward and that is W1 which is equal to 981 Newtons. And there will be a normal force of body 2 on body 1, right? And that will be acting vertically upward like this. We will have that normal force like this. And let's say this is N1, right? And as a reaction, this same N1 force will be acting vertically downward on this body 2 as, as well, right? So now, if, if we consider the body 1, and if we apply the summation of forces along y equals to 0, so we can see that N1 is acting in the positive y direction. If this is my positive x and y direction so this is n1 minus w1 equals to 0 or we can say that n1 is equal to w1 which is equal to 981 newtons we can say that this friction force this f2 and this f2 since they are equal and this will be equal to 0 0.6 times this n1 right since the coefficient of static friction between these two surfaces is 0 0.60 right so i will write that this will be equal to 0 0.60 and 1 or we can say that this will be equal to 0 0.60 times 981 Newton. This is that N1, remember, right? And similarly, if this body is moving towards the right, so what will happen is that there will be a friction force between these two surfaces as well, right? And that friction force will also be acting towards the left. That is in the opposite direction of this external force. And this will be equal to, let's say, F3, right? And similarly, what will happen is that this body 3 will apply the normal force on this body 2 in the upward direction, right, like this. And let's say this is N2. Then this F3 will be equal to uh, this 0.4, the coefficient of static friction be between these two surfaces is 0.4, so we will write that this will be equal to 0 0.40 into N2, right. So now if I write body 2, and for body 2, if we apply the summation of forces along y equals to 0, and so this will be N2 minus this N1, this is that same N1, and minus the weight of this body, right? The weight of this body 2 will be acting vertically downward here. This is that W2. So we will write minus W2. And this will be equal to 0. So we can write that this N2 will be equal to, this is N1 and 1 plus w2 
and n1 is that w1. So, we, in other words, we can say that n2 will be equal to the summation of the weights of both of these blocks, block 1 and block 2 or body 1 and body 2. So, this is w1 plus w2 and w1 is 981 plus w2 is 490.5. So, the n2 is equal to 981 plus 490.5. So, this is 1471.5. 1471.5 newtons. So, now if we apply the summation of forces along x for body 2 equals to 0, this is the equilibrium condition, right. So, we can see that this P force is acting in the positive x direction. So, I will write P minus this F2 minus F3 and this is equal to 0. So, P will be equal to F2 plus F3 and F2 is this thing, right? This is 0 0.6 and 1. And 1 is 981 plus F3. F3 is 0 0.4 into N2. So, 0.4 into N2. N2 is this thing, which is 1471.5. So, this will be 0 0.6 into 981 plus 0 0.4 into 1471.5. This is equal to 177.2, uh, 1177.2 Newtons. So, now since we have applied this and this is the equilibrium condition, we have assumed that body B is in equilibrium, right. So, if we, if this P force, if this external force is greater than 1177.2 Newtons, so what will happen is that only this body 2 will move towards the right. Right. So, if you people want to have the body B in motion towards the right, so then we have to apply the P force greater than 1177.2. Right. Now, there are two possibilities either this only this body, uh, body 2 can move towards the right, or there is one another possibility that these uh, body 2 and body 3 uh, can move towards the right uh, together. Right. So, this is the first case. Right. For first case, if body 2 moves, if moves towards right only, then P must be greater than 1177.2 Newtons. Now, if you want to find the force P, if both block body 2 and body 3 moves together, so, then we will consider body 2 and body 3, the free body diagram of body 2 and body 3 together as well, right. So, now if I draw the free body diagram, right, this is that body 2, this will be our body 2 and this will be our body 3. If they move together, then we will consider the free body diagram of both of these together as well, right. So, here we will have that P external force, here we will have that same friction, right you will have that same F2 friction between these two surfaces, right. It will not change, right. So, we will have that same friction like this. This is that F2 which is equal to 0 0.6 into 981 and here we will have friction between these two surfaces and that is F3, right. And here we have that N1 reaction. This is that same body 2, right. And now, we will have the weight of this body 2, this is W2 and we will have the weight of this body 1 as well, this is W1 and we will have that N3 as well. Or we can say that this is that same N2, let me write this is N2, right. So, this will be equal to again this point three, uh, now the friction between this surface and this, this surface and this surface is point 0.3 right. So, this is point 0.3 times let us say this is N3 right since N2 is between body 2 and body 3 right. So, now it is the uh, between body 3 and the surface right. So, this is N3 
right so this will be 0.3 into n3 right so now we will consider this case right so i will write that when is 2 when body 2 and body 3 move together right so then if we apply the summation of forces along y equals to 0 so we can see that this n3 is acting in the positive y direction and 3 minus this n1 and remember that that n1 was equal to w1 right this is that w1 so i will write that n3 minus n1 which is w1 and this is minus w2 minus w1 this this is not w1 this is w3 the weight of this block right this is minus w3 and this will be equal to 0 so in others in other words we can say that this n3 at the at the floor will be equal to the summation of these three weights right so n3 is equal to w1 plus w2 plus w3 which will be equal to the summation of these three weights so this is uh, 981 plus 490.5 plus 196.2 and this is equal to 1667.7 1667.7 newtons this is n3 right and now if we apply the summation of forces along x equals to 0 then as we can see that this p force is acting in the positive x direction this f2 is acting in the negative direction so i have to write minus and this will this is 0 0.6 times 9.81 uh, 981 sorry and this is minus 0 0.3 times n3 and n3 is 1667.7 and this will be equal to 0 from this we can say that this p will be equal to if we bring these two terms to the other side of the equation so they will become positive and we will have this p as an external force like this so this is 0 0.6 into 981 plus 0 0.3 into 1667.7. So this gives us 188.91. Sorry, 1088.91 newtons. Now from this we can conclude that since we have assumed that we have analyzed uh, all these three bodies by using the equilibrium condition, right? So now if we, if this is the case, if P is equal to 1088.91, so what does this mean is that, this means that all these three bodies will remain at rest, right? They will not move towards the right, right? So if we can say if the external force P is less than or equal to 1088.91, we can say that all bodies will remain at rest right and now if the external force is greater than 1088.91 for this particular condition that is case 2 if the external force P is greater than this value so what will happen is that uh, just if we increase the value of P then 1088.91 let's say if we apply uh, 1089 Newton force so what will happen is that both of these bodies two, body 2 and body 3 will start uh, moving towards the right right but gradually as, if, as we increase the external force until this P value that is 111.77.2 uh, since this p value is greater than this p value let's say that for the first case if p value is let's say represented by p1 so for the first case the p1 value is 1177.2 right so if the external force value is greater than p1 if we say that the external force value is greater than p1 so for that particular case what will happen is that only that body 2 will start moving right and if the external force value is greater than 1088.91 so body 2 and body 3 will move together until and unless the external force value 
uh, become equals to 1177.2 are greater than this value, right? So we can say we can conclude that if the external force value is between these two values, that is 1177.2 and 1088.91. So what will happen is that for this particular case, body two and body three will move together. And if the external force value is greater than 1177.2, then what will happen is that only body 2 will move relative to body 1 and 3, right? So I hope you people would have understood the solution of this particular problem. Kindly subscribe my channel if you people find all my videos helpful for your learning.